Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 1 on 1. So I want to show you how I made this thing here. It's, yeah, this growing thing here using geometry nodes. And uh, the project files are going to be in the description. It's fairly simple to set up. Uh, so let's jump in. You can see that I, I just have this dead branch. And uh, I have these plants growing. And uh, these balls are, glow, are growing on top of it. I like that. I have these two node groups uh, that are powering the growth of the grass and those uh bold things there if i isolate just uh them you can see here we have the balls and here we have uh the grass so i can layer even other things maybe i want a suzanne instead of uh the balls i can just all i have to do is just duplicate this here Control shift d then i will just select uh the suzanne head so it's pretty procedure and uh, easily easily editable so let me show you how to set it up so the first thing we're going to need is a branch itself and uh, what we're going to do with this branch is we're going to generate a path that goes along the branch like that uh, running through the middle of the branch and uh, we can instance our objects onto that branch and animate uh, the, and trim that branch to animate the reveal of anything we add there so let's create a new geometry nodes to create the path, we're going to need uh, the shortest path to use the shortest path node. And uh, when you're using a shortest path, you always need to use the edge, edge path to curves. That is going to change the, the path at, into a usable curve uh, that uh, can be rendered. So if you look at this, you can see that uh, the edge path requires that we have some start vertices and uh, the shortest path requires that we have an end vertices. We need a selection of vertices at the start here to use at the start point of the path and uh, we need some vertices to use as the end points and uh, to do that we're going to add an empty two empties to act as our start and uh, end position so i'll call this start and this is going to be end just like that and all i need to do is get the points that are closer to this empty and uh, use them as the start vertices. So to do that, I'm just going to select, and I'm just going to use the proximity, proximity node, and I bring up, uh, this would be the start, drag that in, use that. Uh, we just want to use the location of this because we want to use it to determine the starting point of our uh, selection. Now this is going to be our target, and now we just want to sample the points like that and uh, what we want to do is get a selection because you see this gives us a uh, distance and position we want a selection of vertices so we're going to compare the position of all the vertices here compare them to this position using a compare node uh, this should be vector so position and uh, this you can use uh, equal to visualize this the selection i can just bring in a delayed geometry just connect this selection and uh, bring in uh, the original joint and uh, make sure that uh, you set this as relative so that we get the relative position of this and uh, let me just lock these and i just show this so whenever i move this around you can see we get a selection of points here and are we using that selection to delete the points just for the visualization but uh, i can remove that now we can use this selection as the end of start so i can have this as the start here now this is still our mesh if you preview that we don't really see anything because we still need uh, to add some to use this shortest path node so for that we're going to do the same thing uh, because this needs the end vertices and we can just do the same setup here shift d connect this geometry but this time use the end like that and i, I can again just to verify i can use the delete geometry to delete some of the geometry and see if this is working as expected and yeah so we can use this 
as the endpoints and uh, the next vertex just goes into the next vertex of the edge path now if you preview this you can see we're getting the path that we want now if i move this around you see what we get but uh, we have a lot of path have a lot of uh, curves for this we just want a single curve and uh, the reason for that i think is because we have the epsilon here uh, which is a which is kind of like changing the fall off of uh, our proximity here so i'm going to just set that to zero zero point something so that we only have one path like this now if i change this you can see what we have and if you want to get the most optimum path or the shortest path all you have to do is calculate the edge cost and uh, you can calculate it by comparing the different positions uh, the start and end position so i'm just going to use the edge vertices now that gives you a position one and position two and uh, we can use a vector math vector math node to get the distance and uh, that should give us our edge cost so you can see this is the best curve and uh, if i move this around you see we, we we get the the curve updates so yeah that's the path everything else is uh, much easier to do now so i can just uh, bring in the original tree so doing this to this i like that so you can see how our path is going around uh, the object so on this here we can uh, instance we can do a distribute distribute points on faces like that we don't need that many i'm just going to use say like a uh, very few and uh, then i can instance on points i'm going to just instance a simple uv sphere yes see what we have and uh, maybe randomize the scale a bit okay so that's what we have now what i can do is uh if i look at the original curve we have uh, since this is a curve i can use a trim curve and uh, that can allow me to just trim uh, the path like that now with that what i can do is use the proximity i can use a proximity node and uh, compare the position of this to our instances here now for this to work correctly we want to convert this to a mesh curve to mesh uh, because the proximity node works with uh, meshes and uh, works best when the mesh has volume so i'm going to add a circle a mesh a curve circle so that this thing has some volume it can increase the radius and uh, that will ensure that uh, get a good proximity of on all of these points so so now we can use this as our target and I just use um let me come here I will have the distance so I can scale these elements so I will grab a scale instances and just use this directly in the scale and I will get something like that if it doesn't work right away try to apply the scale of uh, the mesh uh, that you're working on uh, because I was having issues to get it to work and uh, just realized that uh, I had not applied uh, the scale so that was throwing off uh, the distance here a bit so uh, then after that we're going to just use a ramp here to just play with uh, the scaling a bit here and uh, now all you have to do is animate the start position here and you can also play with the radius um, because this is going to determine the proximity distance so if you see that as you still have some left ar around you can just scale that up and uh, now you can easily animate this i'm going to scale this leave sphere a bit down so we have them like that and i bring back the original geometry i think is uh, around here so i'm just going to join these and the original geometry back so we have that 
and uh, then I can just animate uh, this. Now, if you want to switch this out for something else, you can just drag whatever you have and uh, replace the UV sphere with that object. So the UV sphere is here. I can just switch that out like that. You can even randomize uh, the rotation and everything like I did. Yeah, so that's how I did that. Uh, you can see that uh, the grass are really high detailed grass and those are from Botanical. So the, the vegetation and tree assets uh, that I use are from Botanical. Uh, it's an amazing add-on uh, that comes with a collection of different uh, materials uh, that uh, I think you might find very useful. So I'll be leaving a link in the description to the project files and the Botanical if you want to get that and uh, examine it. Uh, the project files are going to be available to my Patreons uh, and uh, my YouTube members and uh, on Gumroad. Thank you. See you.